um, we have in Matthew that Jesus is, um, is, is about two years old. In the Gospel of Luke, we hear in the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the fields. Now, I've given you the Greek and I've also uh, written it out in English letters. Uh, agraluntes. You can get this part of it, can't you? We have words that come from this in English, right? Give me a couple of words that we have. Agriculture, agricultural, that sort of thing. Okay, and so there are two different kinds of land, and you and I know very well, being um, Missourians, that there's a certain kind of land that's very rocky and the soil is poor and stuff like that, and so you use it for uh, pasture land. Animals graze there, right? Then there are others, kind of bottom land, flat land, there's got deep uh, topsoil and is good for crops. Okay, well, the ancients knew that as well. And so they have two different words, one for area that is, you know, ag good for agriculture, the other that is uh, only appropriate for pasturage. This is the area where it's good for agriculture. So the question then is, why would shepherds be out in the fields at night? And why would they be watching over their flocks? And why would their flocks be in agricultural areas and not in um, uh, pasture, typical pasturage? Good questions, aren't those decent? Typically, if you train yourself to ask the right questions, you usually end up getting the right answers. That, that's what usually happens. This is kind of what is, folks, that you, you know, you're still in school or you were only recently. Uh, out of school. This is the scientific method. Ask the right question, get the right answer. So um, there is a time period in the land of Israel still today where once a field has been harvested, then the farmers have this cooperative relationship with shepherds, um, people who are practicing animal husbandry, and they invite them into the field. There, the, um, the herd animals will graze over the stubble. I'm using a biblical term there. The Bible uses that term for judgment, where everything is just wiped clean. Um, and so uh, the field is at the same time cleansed of stalks and you know, stuff that's not you know, edible, leftover stuff. And there at the same time, they are fertilizing the field. You know? What goes in has to come out in another form, and that means that you're setting the farmer up with a clean field for the next growing season and a freely fertilized field. And that's good for everybody. So there's been this cooperative relationship um, with farmers and, um, and herdsmen for millennia in the, um, in the ancient Near East. This is probably what's going on here. The, uh, the final uh, harvest has taken place, and so the farmer has invited the, the uh, shepherds in, and they're giving free rent. But at the same time, they can't go over into somebody else's property, or there might be stacks of something that's off limits to these animals. So the shepherds have to keep a close eye on these animals so they don't go beyond the permission that has been set and begin to eat real animal stuff that are good for people, uh, get into somebody else's property and get in trouble. And so that's probably what's going on here. Well, when does that happen? That typically will happen between um, the middle of September and the middle of October. Because Israel's harvest um, cycle is not all that different from ours, you know? We're at pretty similar, you know, uh, north-south. Uh, and so that's, that, that relatively narrow window suggests then that uh, the um, birth of Jesus was taking place n not in, on December the 25th, you know, like the, that famous paper that the student wrote, you know, in the year 0000, um, but rather probably m more likely in the, uh, in the early fall. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch our videos. If you're benefiting from the content that you're receiving from them, please make sure that you're following us on Facebook and that you subscribe to the YouTube channel so you never miss a thing. 
While you're at it, share our content with your friends and family. Encourage them to follow us as well. Thanks for helping us to reach as many as we can with a powerful message of God's Word in its original context.